Hello and welcome back to Linear Algebra, the video series where we talk a lot about eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And in today's part 62, I want to show you a quick recipe how to calculate eigenvectors. So this will not be a complicated video because most of it will be about calculations. However, you might already know, before we start with these calculations, I really want to thank all the nice people who support the channel on Steady, here on YouTube, on Patreon or by other means. And if you have the time, you can visit my webpage and download the PDF version and the quiz for this video. Okay, now before we start with the recipe, let's recall two important notions. Indeed, these will be the two multiplicity notions we have for an eigenvalue lambda. First, we have alpha of lambda, which is the algebraic multiplicity. This one tells us the multiplicity of the zero of lambda in the characteristic polynomial. On the other hand, we also have gamma of lambda, which is the geometric multiplicity. And by definition, this one is equal to the dimension of the eigenspace associated to lambda. Now, in order to make it simpler, let's denote this eigenspace by eig of lambda. So this one is a subspace in Rn or Cn, depending which space we consider. However, you already know, in the general sense we will always go to the complex space, because there we have all the eigenvalues included. Okay, then I would say we are ready to talk about the recipe for calculating all the eigenvectors of a given matrix. And as always, we call this matrix A. And in the general terms, it should be a square matrix with complex entries. Okay, and then in the recipe here, essentially we only have two steps. The first step would be calculating eigenvalues and the second one calculating eigenvectors. You already know, both things are related and now we will formulate this calculation in a correct way. Okay, then the first step is we calculate the zeros of the characteristic polynomial we call Pa. And as a reminder again, Pa of lambda is given by the determinant of A minus lambda identity matrix. And now since the degree of this polynomial is n, we will find exactly n zeros. However, of course some of them could coincide because they could have a higher multiplicity. Therefore, if we only write down the distinct ones, we could have k of them. Hence, k here is an integer that is less or equal than n. So this means, together with these k different eigenvalues, we should also write down the algebraic multiplicities. And there we already have a good check if everything is correct, you can sum up the algebraic multiplicities and we should get out n. If that's not the case, something definitely went wrong in your calculation of the zeros here. Moreover, we also have an additional check here if you consider a real matrix A. This means we have the case that all the entries in our complex matrix here are actually real numbers. This implies then that all the coefficients in our polynomial are also given by real numbers. And therefore, if you have a lambda j that is a zero of the polynomial, then the complex conjugate is also a zero of Pa. So for example, if the complex number i is a zero of Pa, then minus i is as well. So you can remember, proper complex zeros always come in pairs. However, that is only the case if the complex matrix is actually a real matrix. And also, if lambda j is a real number, this implication does not help at all, because this is the same number after all. However, this is still something that can help you finding all the zeros of the characteristic polynomial. Now, after that, we can immediately go to the second step, which is about calculating the eigenvectors. And of course, this one we have to do for every distinct eigenvalue, so we have to do it for j going from 1 to k. So depending how many eigenvalues we have, this is more or less work. However, you should already know how to find eigenvectors, you just have to solve an LES. More precisely, we have to solve the system of linear equations where the left hand side is given by A minus lambda j identity matrix and where the right hand side is given by the zero vector in Cn. And now you should already know, the solution set of this LES which is the kernel of this matrix, is what we call the eigenspace associated to lambda j. And the notation we have already fixed before, 
we just write i of lambda j. Okay, and then you do that for every j, and then we have all the eigenspaces for the matrix A. And now depending what you want to do, you either write them down as subspaces of Cn or of Rn. And now in the end, the only thing that remains to write down is the set of all eigenvectors of A. And of course, these are given if you put all the eigenspaces together. So for example, you could say we take the union of these sets and go from J to K. However, most crucially here is that you should not forget that the eigenspaces are subspaces, so they also have the zero vector as an element. However, the zero vector is never an eigenvector. Therefore, if we just exclude the zero vector in the end, we get the set of all eigenvectors. Okay, and there we have it. This is the whole recipe, which you can remember for calculating all the eigenvalues and all the eigenvectors for a given matrix A. And I think the best way to remember that is to look at an example now. So we consider a matrix and then we go through the three steps here. And indeed, of course, I want to have an example which is not too simple and not too complicated. Therefore, I take a 3 times 3 example here. And inside, I only choose real numbers. However, still it could mean that the eigenvalues are complex valued. But this one we will immediately see in the first step when we calculate the zeros of the characteristic polynomial. Now, first we have to calculate PA, so we have to calculate a determinant. And please don't forget, the matrix here is the same as A, but with minus lambda on the diagonal. And now since this is a 3 times 3 matrix, we can use the rule of Saru to calculate this determinant. So you know, we go through the diagonals here, and in the end we have 6 terms in the sum. And now I would say, we simply write them down, and then we have our solution. And the important thing here is, that you don't forget about the signs that are involved. So there I would say, this is definitely something you can practice with a lot of calculations. Okay, so these are the six terms, and now we can expand all the products and simplify the whole thing. So maybe we do that very quickly, because it's just a calculation. So first, let's multiply these two factors here, and then we get minus 4 plus lambda squared. And then, for the next terms here, we just have to multiply factors. And then we get this nice result here, and we immediately see we can put a lot of things together. So by doing that quickly, we get immediately minus 20 lambda plus 32. Okay, and then finally, let's expand this product here. So this is minus 32 plus 4 lambda plus 8 lambda squared minus lambda cubed. And then as before, we just have to put all the numbers together. And then you should also recognize we can factorize a lambda. This means we have immediately lambda here minus lambda squared plus 8 lambda minus 16. And now this thing is not hard to recognize, we can rewrite it as lambda minus 4 squared. And now, since this is a nice factorization of the characteristic polynomial, we can immediately read the eigenvalues. So maybe let's put this whole calculation here on the side and let's write down the eigenvalues on the left hand side. So the first eigenvalue we find as a zero of this polynomial is lambda 1 and it is equal to zero. And moreover, we see the characteristic multiplicity is equal to one. So this is a very nice result. The first eigenvalue is done. And now the second one we see is given as lambda two is equal to four. However, for this case, we have the characteristic multiplicity of two. Okay, and now with this result, we can go to the second step, finally, and calculate the eigenspaces. And let's start with the first one, lambda 1 is equal to 0. There, we know the eigenspace is given as the kernel of our matrix A. Of course, by definition, we would have to subtract lambda 1 times the identity matrix from A, but since lambda 1 is equal to 0, we don't subtract anything. Hence, now what we have to do is simply to calculate this kernel of this matrix. And you know, for the kernel, we are allowed to do row operations. And in the end, we want a row echelon form, so we do what we always do, we do the Gaussian elimination. And here for the first step, we can just exchange rows. 
So I simply exchange the rows 1 and 2 because the minus 1 in the upper left corner is much nicer to calculate with. So that's the common thing. You see here we have our first pivot and that's what we calculate with. So you know what we do is we generate zeros in the first column. So for the second row we add 8 times the first row. And for the third row we have to subtract 2 times the first row. And then you see we get the zeros as wanted. And now what we see is that we have zeros in the last row altogether. In other words, we have already reached our row echelon form here. And therefore, now we can write down the solution set of this system of linear equations. So please don't forget, we only have one free variable here. And this variable is x3 here, so maybe let's call it t. And then by our backward substitution, we get minus one half t in the second component, and indeed zero in the first one. Okay, and t is the free variable, so it could be t in R or t in C. So in this case, it's just a matter of taste if you want to calculate in the complex numbers or in the real numbers. Since all eigenvalues are real, we could also just calculate in the real numbers. Moreover, this set here now can also be written as a span of a single vector. And in order to make the numbers nicer, you could say, let's take minus 1 in the middle and 2 here. So definitely a vector inside this eigenspace here, and of course it spans the whole eigenspace. Okay, there we have it. This is step 2 for the eigenspace of lambda 1. And now we can do a similar thing for lambda 2 is equal to 4. And of course similar means here we do exactly the same idea, but different calculations. However, now it's important that we don't forget to subtract 4 on the diagonal of the matrix A. So this means from before this only changes the numbers here on the diagonal. But then of course the whole calculation for the kernel is different now. However, since minus 1 is still the best number here, I would say we do the same exchange again. And then as before we have our pivot here and with that one we calculate. So let's do the Gaussian elimination again. So maybe I don't have to write down the steps now because you can do them as before. And what we get then is a zero row and this one for the last row. So you see, in order to get the row echelon form, we have to exchange rows again. And moreover, we can also scale the non-zero row to make the numbers nicer. And if we scale with minus 8, we get plus 1 here. And this one is non-zero, hence it's our second pivot. In other words, now we've reached the row echelon form as wanted. Okay, and now this means we only have one free variable and we can write down the solution set again as a span of a single vector. And now it's not hard to see, the vector minus 2, 1, 0 will do it. Of course, you can write down the solution set in different ways, but it's always good to use some nice numbers and a span. And now, some nice result we immediately see is that the geometric multiplicities are both 1. So even lambda 2, that has algebraic multiplicity of 2, has a geometric multiplicity of 1. Okay, and now for the last step, we can write down the eigenvectors. So we already know, there's nothing to do, we just write down the eigenspaces and exclude the zero vector. So this is not really an important step, it just shows that you know what eigenvectors are. However, in future videos, we will see it's very important that we take non-zero vectors from the eigenspaces. So actually, we need well-chosen eigenvectors to calculate with. Indeed, this is what we want to do if we want to diagonalize a matrix A. However, I can already tell you, for this example here, it's not possible to diagonalize it. The reason is simple, we don't have enough eigenvectors. We don't have enough directions for the eigenvectors. In other words, here they don't span the whole space. However, that is a topic for another video, so I really hope we meet again. Have a nice day and bye bye.